Hey everyone, Joel Hansen here. Today we're outside Q Bar. Q Bar, yes, that's right. Food bar, music, food, sports. Today to do their big boy burger challenge, this is right. So this is a big burger, obviously. So it has a couple pounds of beef on it, specifically three, I believe, 12 ounce patties. Then you have like, I think 12 strips of bacon, a whack of cheese. There's a big side of garlic parm fries, and you also have a side of coleslaw. So you have 30 minutes to complete the challenge. If you do, you get the meal for free and a sweet t-shirt. So pretty straightforward. Let's head on in and see what we can do. And if we fail, it'll be the burger's about 25, 30 bucks. So let's go eat some food. And George just started his big boy challenge here at Q Bar in Chicago. So he has the big burger with a side of Parmesan fries and a thing of coleslaw. Oh cool, thanks so much. <laughs> I'll do it for you. Hey everyone, welcome to this video. Today we're here at Q Bar. That's right, Q Bar in Chicago. And there's a couple locations around, um, all in around the Chicago area. Um, but here we are today doing their big boy burger challenge, as we said. Uh, so my friend George is going first, and then we'll cut to my attempt. Um, but ultimately, yeah, definitely a big burger. As we said, uh, you have a couple, uh, about 36 ounces of beef, a full pound of bacon, a pound of cheese, plus all the other toppings and fries. Doing real well. George is two minutes, 20 seconds in. Looks like lots of nice burgers, lots of nice beef. How's it taste? Good? Is it steaming? There's some napkins if you need it. In regards to taste, I uh, have obviously haven't tasted it at this point, so I will have to get back to you on that when I start eating the challenge. Um, but overall, I think it is a pretty reasonable challenge. Um, I think it's really nice that you can order this challenge to share. Like, it's not only explicitly available as a challenge. You can order this and share it with a couple of friends or family. And I think the cost is very reasonable, giving it a uh, enticing buy-in, even if you fail it. I think it's also kind of a good, let's say, beginner to moderate size challenge with the same level of difficulty. So with that being said, I think it's actually very fair in the capacity of what you're getting for the price. And again, I think something that's very enticing. Hence, um, they actually said that they hadn't seen a winner at this location in a year or more than a year, um, just but quite a few failures. Kelna George doing real well. To do the challenge too, you did not have to call in advance. You can just show up and do it, which is always uh, a little more uh, convenient than planning. 25 minutes, 15 seconds left. Looks like lots of cheese and bacon. And the challenge was also available at all uh, of their locations. And the house record for this location was something about 14 minutes. Definitely looks hot. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it is steaming. No, I'm not sure if that record was a record for all locations or explicitly just this location, but when we asked for the record, they said it was about 14. There you go, you get a double feature today. Doing good. Yeah, he's crushing it. Yeah. Burger looks good. You gonna try it next? Huh? You gonna try it next? Maybe. Nice. I'll let us get back to the video as we continue to watch George crush this challenge though, and then I'll be back in a little bit when we watch my attempt. So my attempt will be coming here shortly. George absolutely crushing it. Just over 13 minutes so in. Good. Yeah, he's destroying it. Just down to the parm fries. It'll be there like a garlic parm fry or something like that. He's about to get it for free. 
Hey, hopefully. It's doing well, right? Do you see many people do it? Yeah, I've seen a couple. Nice. I don't think they won, though. Oh, no? No. So you see them try it, but not beat it. Gotcha. Those fries look yummy, though. I'd eat them. Uh-huh. You'd eat the fries? Yeah, definitely. A box? A box? Yeah. Yeah, it's not easy. It's like both. It's a box? Okay. Doing good, man. George just absolutely coming on in. Last moment, crushing it, absolutely crushing it. And I need to put a video up. Perfect, perfect, perfect memory. Here we go, finishing up. A little over halfway done. Nice, 16 minutes right on the dot. Good job, George. Yeah. Killed it, dude. I'd fist bump you, but your hands are a little messy, so. Woo! Good job, dude. So you get a meal for free and a t-shirt. Good job, George. Alrighty, Ron, so here we are with the challenge. Definitely a sizable burger. But like we said, three massive patties. Literally, like, 12 strips of bacon, so it's basically a pound of bacon, plus all the onion rings. There's a lot of onion rings, a big pickle spear on here. I do have a side of coleslaw as well, and then all the garlic parm fries. So 30 minutes. Um, the record here is about 14 minutes, or roughly 14 minutes, we think. They get a couple attempts, like maybe like one a week, and the gentleman has only seen one winner which was our friend George Lobianco in the last year. So definitely not too great of a success rate, but hopefully we'll be able to beat this one today. Again, it's only 25 bucks, you get the meal for free, so definitely worth a shot. So uh, let's give it a try. Let's get started here momentarily. All right, so I am ready. Restaurant is ready. I'm gonna undo the belt. We need a little boost in horsepower today. All right, so um, how about we get started? Let's say the count of, uh, maybe I'll, I'm gonna, I'll probably like put the burger, I'll just leave it. I might start with this coleslaw. Because, why not? Why not? All right, it's just slowly falling, but I think that's okay. So how about we get started? We'll say at the count of five, four, three, two, one. Cheers. Peppery, celery seeds. That is a creamy coleslaw. All right, try to get into this burger a bit. Definitely a big one. Pickle. Very, very hot. Mm. But very, very good. 
All right, everybody, and welcome to my attempt of the big boy, the Q bar big boy. Um, so as I was mentioning, the burger patties, very, very flavorful. I really enjoyed the seasoning, the spice they put on them. And uh, to me, that makes a big difference. I'm a big flavor guy. I love spices. I love salt. And so, of course, you know, good tasting food always makes things go down easier and always goes down easier. Um, in regards to the patties, I would say they were like a... I don't know, an 80, 20, maybe a little even more like a 30, 70, 25, 75, you know, I don't know, but definitely seemed to have quite a bit of uh, fat content um, in the meat and or just kind of in around the tray. Um, so a little bit of extra juice never uh, hurts. And then of course it compares to how you actually had the burgers cooked. Um, you know, mine weren't well done, um, hence, you know, a little more juice as well. That was a very good burger patty. Really enjoyed that. Of course, I had my ketchup pile, and you can see a bottle of ketchup there readily available. Um, so I really do like ketchup. I think ketchup goes really well with ground beef and or french fries. Um, so basically any burger challenge, I definitely have a nice pile of ketchup, but I also use it strategically. It also adds a bit of uh, lubricity, a bit of lubrication to the meats and to your other food items. So for myself, not only does it add a nice flavor that I enjoy, but it also uh, kind of aids me in my eating process as well which of course i have no complaints about any benefit any help um, is always appreciated and why something like ketchup or a condiment or a sauce can be more advantageous compared to something like water is think of meat if you you know chew up some ground beef and you put water in your mouth the water just runs through it whereas if it was a bun the bun would absorb some of the moisture it would you know get kind of wetter i guess you could say um, or moister but beef you know doesn't really do that However, you know, when you add something which is uh, thicker, coats the meat kind of like, kind of like an oil in a way. Like think of like, you know, if you were to oil up or, um, you know, put some moisturizer on your hands, they're a little more slippery rather than if you put water on them. Just some things have more lubricity than others. And so for myself, that is ketchup and when I burger challenges. How about three and a half minutes in? Again, very, very good. These burger patties are delicious, very juicy. Bacon's great, got a little pile of ketchup, love ketchup. But at that, I will comment on the other food items as we get to them. Um, and ultimately, I hope you enjoyed the video so far. I wanna thank you for watching to this point. Hope you enjoy the rest of it. I believe that's pretty much all the information I have uh, for you about the challenge, all the important points. Um, additionally, I guess all I'll say is, if you like this video so far, please consider subscribing hit that subscribe button it helps me out helps you out the way you don't miss an upload you don't miss a beat and of course that way um, it also helps youtube know that you like my content hit that like button as well it does the same thing that way youtube is more likely to share the video with other people and if you enjoyed it hopefully some others will enjoy it as well but hey i really appreciate that in the meantime let me know down below if you like a normal fries or a parm fries more and at that let's check out the rest of the video I think we're about five and a half minutes in. Burger patties are gone. Some big buns. And some onion rings. Woo! A lot of food. Excuse me. What's the big bun? All right. And some more buns here. Ooh, this one is juicy. Look at that. That is called a juicy burger. Calorie free.
Guam. And fries. Garlic parm fries. I'm sure these are like. Tasty. Oh, bun. Hell yeah. About 11 minutes in. Very delicious. What's up? Yeah. Oh, oh, let's go. Oh, let's go. Let's 12 go. minutes, 37 seconds. Go, I think you need a shot of award. What was Woo! it? 12, 37. All right, so official time, 12, 37. Cool. And then by the time I clear my mouth, maybe like 12, 40, 50, whatever. Woo! Very good challenge. Those parm fries, garlic parm fries, really good. That burger patty and those burgers were delicious. So huge shout out to that. That was fantastic. That was a great burger. You can come on in, you can order that either as a challenge or just order a share with people. What else is absolutely crazy is here on a Thursdays, they have like $3 half pound burgers. Think about that. $3 for half pound burgers. That's pretty crazy. So if I lived here, I'd definitely come on by on Thursday, grab myself way too many of those burgers. But yeah, seriously, delicious burger. Huge thanks to the staff here for having me out. Really a great hospitality. Great crowd as well. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Really appreciate it. Yeah. And, uh, that was about that. So glad we get the meal for free, which is pretty cool. We also get a sweet t-shirt. Got a little bit of uh, saucy, saucy stuff everywhere. Like I said, very juicy burger, very delicious. But uh, at that, that's pretty much it. So other ones, of course, stay happy all day hungry, happy eating. Uh, if you're ever in the area, stop on by. There's four locations and counting. So um, yeah, let's do it, guys. So cue bar on that. Until next time, just have a little day. And here we got the sweet t-shirt. It says Q bar. Big boy. And on the back it says, I beat the Q bar, big boy. And funny story, so they have like these, like the winning shirts, but they're all sold out, or like they're out of the losing shirts. Cause you actually get a challenge or a shirt, even if you lose a challenge, it's pretty cool. But they're all out of the losing shirts, only got the winning shirts. So luckily we got the win today. So here we are outside the Alder Planetarium. Alder Planetarium. And uh, that's some, I imagine, astrologist. Maybe it's supposed to be like Socrates. I don't know, somebody like that. But definitely right out here on the water. Um, over here, this is the Navy Pier. That's the Navy Pier where we were yesterday. Again, we have all the um, Chicago skyline, which is pretty, pretty dang cool. Of course, now we're seeing it from a very different angle. Um, additionally, like we saw it from over there, now we're way over here. And uh, like I said, it's so cool they have this little walk all along the water here, like literally like multiple levels, and the one is literally just like, I mean, obviously it'd vary with the water, but like a foot, a foot or two away from it. So super, super cool. Like I said, I'm so impressed and did not know that Chicago was so like, water accessible like this is definitely a place to have a boat miami you want a boat here you want a boat so yeah definitely pretty dang cool and outside the aquarium which is a very very beautiful building we have this gentleman holding a fish a very large fish i will say is there a sign depicting what it is not that i can see but there you go man holding a fish very interesting makes sense at the aquarium and to take that back, here we go, this is what it is, man with fish. 
Stephen Backenhol Sculptor, Sculptor September 2001, a generous gift to the Shedd Aquarium from William N. Sick in honor of his wife Stephanie. Cool. Similarly, in the same area along the water, we have the Field Museum. So this is a museum of natural history from my uh, recollection. So and in here you'd be able to, you know, like see like mummies and, and et cetera, et cetera, which is an incredibly extravagant building. I mean, look at just the architecture on it. Um, and it is expansive. I mean, it goes way, 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 way in both directions. So definitely cool. So yeah, the Field Museum, very, very famous uh, museum of natural history down here in Chicago. So interesting about the uh, Field Museum, apparently um, in about 1912 uh, to 14, um, Lake Michigan actually covered this site where the Field Museum's trustees accepted for their new home. So they actually created this new land, this new piece of land, so apparently maybe what we're on right now is actually all just uh, filled and man-made. They actually used ashes and bricks from demolished buildings to landfill soil. Um, and then, yeah, the museum rose reaching 30 feet above Grant Park, called a little bit of ancient Greece, modernized and set down in the midst of a great commercial city. It opened in 1921. That's pretty impressive um, to consider, you know, all the, the steps and the stages that it would have, you know, have taken to make this museum over a hundred years ago. And like they said, in a very, very commercial city, um, let's see what else. Uh, the Belvedere, where you're standing, offers a unique place to view Chicago. Uh, our city is acclaimed internationally for its architecture and its concern for open space. Panorama brings together the cityscape and the park and the lakefront, preserved uh, for us by those who believe in Daniel Burnham's vision that the lakefront, by right, belongs to the people. And, you know, I have to agree. I think that's, uh, you know, kind of very accurate. And I think that's what's been most surprising. So that they have preserved this lakefront. They have so much green space. They have this big uh, section by the water. And uh, yeah, again, definitely have to agree. The architecture is beautiful. And that's kind of the, mo the gist of that one, which is pretty interesting. Oh, here's the Buckingham Fountain, which we saw earlier, completed in 1927. That would have been, uh, again, very, lo very different looking back then, I'm sure. So yeah, that's pretty dang cool. These are uh, kind of eroded or damaged. Um, but the lakefront encountered by Chicago's earliest occupants was a gently rolling landscape covered with dune grasses three to six feet high. It is definitely a little different. So they're saying it would have been about 1765, 1778. Of course, that would be excluding the, you know, individuals who are indigenous to the land. So pretty interesting. And here we have a very interesting set of uh, sculptures. I don't exactly know what it means, but I think it's supposed to, um, basically it's a whole bunch of like walking individuals, like half-bodied individuals, um, obviously facing and walking, crisscrossing different ways. Do I know what it's called? No. If I had to guess what it's about or any of the meaning, I'd have to say it's like supposed to be a representation of like the hustling, bustling streets. But I have absolutely no clue. Those ones over there are more in like just a circle. Well, these ones are a little more spread out. But definitely interesting and uh, maybe I'll find a name of it here in a moment but yeah definitely like I said there's a lot of like architecture and art and green space just down here kind of in Chicago so yeah like to me although he is barefooted I don't know it's interesting looking pretty cool though I kind of get like a suit vibe from it kind of looks like a bit of a suit but uh yeah pretty cool Pretty cool. And up these big long stairs, we do have another statue of some sort. I'm assuming this is, I don't even know who this is to be honest. Let's find out. It was, and I quote, elected by the state of Illinois in honor of Major General John A. Logan. So pretty cool, it is a gentleman on a horse with a flag. And just off Michigan Ave, we have some fancy looking bridge. We have some statues of some gentleman wearing a uh, headdress of some sort on a horse. And if you look over there, I don't know if this is now Buckingham Fountain or what, but some fountain is literally shooting that high up in the air. Like that's a fountain. See this stream right here, that is a fountain, which is 
absolutely crazy to think about because we are like we are a long 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 ways away so crazy here we got a lion and we have the art institute of chicago and another lion here so yeah another uh just on michigan ave another great big sight to be seen and here in millennium park they have these great big walls with a face projected on it so we have one and then we have the other so here the individual is smiling and here she's not very happy maybe maybe now turning into a smile and then smiling so i don't know i, I almost feel by looking at this it's like look at this one you want to smile Looking at that one, you don't really know what to do, but she's starting, I feel, now she's smirking. Look at that, she's starting to, starting to smile. She's starting to crack up, starting to lighten up. This lady is, I don't know, winding down a little bit. This lady is too. She's looking not as excited anymore, so. I don't know what this is, don't know what it's for, but long story short, I'd say put a smile on. Dang now the cat, you're gonna be down the menu next week if you don't shut up. So everybody, thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. Click my face right here to subscribe. And also I picked two videos. That's right, two videos just for you that you might like. Right here. So like I said guys, hit that subscribe, hit one of these videos, do it right now. Until next time, have a lovely day.